Greetings, I'm Professor Kay, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about preparing Server Core to join our Server 2016 domain. Now we have a couple of different options that we can use to prepare this machine for joining the domain. We can use the sconfig utility, or we can use PowerShell. Using the sconfig utility, we get sort of a GUI that we can use to configure the networking settings and to join the domain and we can also use PowerShell to do the same thing. Let's quickly take a look how we go about using the sconfig utility to get server core to join our domain. Now the network settings are under option 8 so here at my prompt I'm just going to type in the number 8 and hit enter and on this next screen we see that I have to choose the adapter. Now I only have one adapter that's index number 1, so I'm going to type in 1 here and hit enter. Now I can go in and I can set the network adapter address, set the DNS servers, I can clear that information and I can return to the main menu. So using the sconfig utility, I'm going to go ahead and select option number 1, hit enter. And now I can type in whether I want to receive this information using DHCP or a static IP. Now we're going to use S for static. I'm going to hit enter. Now it wants the static IP address. Since I have assigned the first IP address in the reserve block from 10 to 19 for my DC1, I'll now use the next available IP address, which is dot .11. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it says that the subnet mask will be default if I just hit enter. We're going to go ahead and accept that. And now it wants a default gateway but we don't have one so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. We're now going to configure the information for my DNS servers by selecting option number two. We now know that the DNS servers IP address is the same networking IP address assigned to my Forest root domain controller, the first domain controller we brought up in the domain, DC1. I'm now going to go ahead and hit enter. Preferred DNS server has been set. We don't need an alternate, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter. And I'm back to my menu. I'm going to type in option number four to return to the main menu. And now I will take a look at renaming this machine if I need to. Now this machine's already been named Server Course, so in that regard, we're good to go. So now I'm prepared to join the domain. To join the domain, I'm going to select option number one and hit enter. And it wants to know, do I want to join a domain or a work group? I'm going to type in a capital D for domain and hit enter. The first thing we have to do is tell it the name of the domain we wish to join. I'm going to use my subdomain name that I use to configure the forest, which is us.cyberoffense.com. I'm going to hit enter, and now it wants the authorized user that can join this machine to the domain, and that's always going to be the domain administrator. I've typed in administrator for the username. I'm going to hit enter, and now it wants me to type in the password that is associated with this domain user. Now you will not be able to see the password as you type it in. You just have to type it in and when you're done just hit enter. And it says do you want to change the computer name before restarting the computer? I'll say no. You must restart your computer to apply these changes. Restart now. I'll say yes. And when we come back up this machine will be a member of my domain. My server has come back up. I'm now ready to press control alt delete to unlock it. It wants me to type in my administrative password. Server Core is now up and running and it is a member of the domain, but I don't want to manage it from here. I want to do this from my server manager. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to add Server Core to my server manager. To add Server Core to my server manager, I'm just going to go over here to All Servers, right click, and Add Server. I'm now going to either type in the name or the IP address of the machine I want to join. I typed in Server Core, which is the name of the machine, and now I'm just going to move it over here to the next column, and I'll say OK. 
Now, server manager and this domain controller is going to go out and it's going to talk to server core and try to get some information off of it, such as the IP address and any other information that it needs to be able to manage that machine remotely. The benefit of doing it this way is I can select server core. I can then go up to manage and I can add roles and features to server core using server manager remotely without having to worry about using the command line and or the PowerShell. By using an installation of server core, and it doesn't make any difference if it's installed on my domain controller or if it's installed on my Windows 10 machine, I can still manage all my servers as if I was logged on locally to those machines as long as I'm logged on as administrator. For instance, if I install DNS onto server core and I want to have that DNS installation become the secondary DNS server, I can manage that installation from the DNS console. Once I'm inside the console, all I have to do is go to the very top of the root, and now I can connect to a DNS server, and I will choose server core if DNS is installed as a role. And I can do the same thing with DHCP if I want to configure server core to be my DHCP failover server. I would install DHCP and that's how I would annotate it as the failover server. I could then go up to tools, open up DHCP, and I could add server core same way. I would just go in there and I would add server core and I would be able to manage it all from this one location. So I now have all the benefits of having a server core installation on my network, but I also have the ability to manage it using all the GUI and the GUI interfaces up inside of a normal full install of Server 2016 because of Server Manager. That concludes this short video presentation on how we go about configuring Server Core 2016 to join the domain and how we go about joining the domain using Server Core. Now, if you have any questions or have any concerns about any of the content or the information that was presented in this video or the lab, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.